for testing chicken from popular fast food chains. Can I have one of those grilled chicken sandwiches, please? Not the deep fried stuff, the grilled no batter stuff. Is it 100% chicken? Yes. Check out the pitch from all the big brands. Sure leaves you thinking it's all natural and all just chicken. But is it? To find out, we turn to science. Matt Harnden is a technician at Trent University. His labs tested meat samples for industry and government. How? Analyzing DNA. Hi, Matt. Hi. Which is why Hi, we're here. Will a DNA test tell us how much chicken is actually in the chicken? It'll give you a rough estimate of a ratio. It will give us a rough estimate. Between chicken DNA and a plant DNA, if there's plants. DNA tests won't give us an exact percentage of the amount of chicken in the whole piece of chicken, but Matt says it's a good indicator. This idea then that if you're not getting 100% chicken DNA, does that mean that you're not getting 100% actual chicken meat? Yeah, exactly. So there'd be a legitimate chicken in there mixed together with some plant filler. Yep, if there's something else in there besides chicken, the DNA test will find it. Matt and his team get to work. The samples we're testing, grilled chicken breasts, grilled strips, and this oven roasted chicken. While we wait for the lab results, back at CBC, we're setting up another test, a taste test. It's a chicken challenge. We're bringing in taste testers to judge this chicken. Let's meet them. Lunchtime, baby. Let's go. Will Mahood is serious about Subway. Cucumbers and black olives. It's pretty well always chicken. It's a little leaner, less fat, no sugar in it you're getting a little better quality than, say, uh, you know, a typical fast food chain like McDonald's. Will trust he's getting the real deal chicken. So I expect that it's going to be 100% chicken breast. And that's lunch, folks. What do you guys want to eat? Make McDonald's. Fast food gives this busy mom a break. They have the grilled chicken burgers. Rose Heron feels better about chicken. chicken wrap? Yes, grilled chicken. And so does her son, Daniel. I think the chicken burger is a healthier option, not as much sodium and all that bad stuff in it. If we're going to eat that food, better that we eat chicken, right? I'm ready for a snack. Irena Valenta likes to treat herself. Her go-to, Wendy's. Can I have the uh, grilled chicken sandwich? Do you know if it's frozen or fresh? No, it's our fresh. Irena has high blood pressure, so she's careful. I'm watching the salt, the fat content. Mmm, 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 mmm. that's good. Sample A. Our taste test is about to get started. Sample C. Sample F. Our judges are standing by outside our studio. Houston. We'll lift off. Here to spice things up, Toronto chef Rod Bowers. Welcome to our test kitchen. Thank you. And to fill us in on the nutrition facts, registered dietitian Christy Brissett. Rod, we're also going to have you uh, put a little twist into this competition. What we want you to do is cook up some chicken. So we're going to see if our testers can spot the home cooked chicken from the fast food chicken. I got to bring my gourmet. A game. Let's a game. Do it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Yes. I'm going to put a little bit of love in here. And it's very simple. It's just, you know what? It's actually just some dried herbs, a little bit of salt. That's all you need, right? Well, take a look at your competition here. These are our samples. I think I am well out in front of this chicken game. To keep this taste test blind and unbiased, we're stripping it down. Only we know the brands behind the buns. 
Well, all of our samples have been undressed, but there's still one plate <laughs> that's looking for a little love. Dun, dun, dun. Can you help us out there, <laughs> Chef Ron? Dun, dun, dun. I'm ready. Come on. Bring it on. All right. Final sample is in. You guys ready to meet the testers? Let's do it. Bring them on. All right. Taste testers, come on down. Rose, Daniel, Will, and Irena, all fast foodies, about to find out what they're in for. Welcome, welcome. Hello. You guys are here for the chicken taste test challenge. So are you guys up for the challenge? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Let's, Let's eat it. some chicken. Yeah. All right. Okay. We start with sample A. Rose, there you are. You. A and W. Take right in. Tender. Tender, yeah. Better than I thought. Yeah. Mine was more rubbery. Yeah, than I, I found thought. it a lot rubbery. Mm -hmm. You really find like it rubbery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine's dry. There you are, sir. Thank you. Next up, McDonald's. This one was juicier. I find mine a bit stringy. Stringy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree a bit with that. Seem to be juicier. Mm -hmm. Here comes Subway's first sample. What's that? Irena's face is priceless. <laughs> what? What are you? What's got you there, Irena? What are you thinking? Is it real? <laughs> is it real? Okay. Yeah, it looks like the grill marks are there just to make it look like it was grilled. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hmm. We'll get to the bottom of those grill marks later. Mm. Very salty. Salty. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's see about the next Subway item. Now, sample D is actually one of our first chicken strips that we're going to take a look at. The pieces I have look real. Like, I would think they're a good chicken. Whoa. This is the first one that tasted a little more seasoned. The others yes. have been a lot plainer. For me, it tasted like more flavor than it did actual chicken. It's artificial. I, it's not chicken to me. I think a bit too much salt for me. What will they say about Tim Hortons? Um, I'll try it. It tasted more like chicken because of the stringiness. And Will, what did you think about this one? Uh, that didn't taste real at all. I found it very rubbery. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't taste any real chicken at all in it. Right. Mm -hmm. As I was chewing it, I wasn't sure that it was chicken. Uh -huh. Tough crowd. Look out, Chef Rod. We're going to start clucking. <laughs> but right now, here's Wendy's. I love the flavor. I, mm, I love the flavor. <laughs> that shouldn't have said clock. <laughs> I think this is very good. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. And I did feel that I tasted lemon. Um, didn't love the taste, per se. Tasted almost like sanitized. Even though I didn't find the flavoring that good, it tastes like it's more real and not too artificial. Because when things are artificial, they taste a lot better than if they're real. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear is right. What will Daniel think about the chef's home-cooked chicken? So here we go, sample G. These grill marks look possibly real. Will our top chef get top marks? It was juicy. I, I love this natural flavoring. I found mine a little tougher to cut, I think. Uh, with that being said, though, it tasted real. I found it a bit salty. Salty, OK. Yeah, and Rose? I'm um, very comparable to the one uh, previous. Either one of those I would think is good choices. Now that you've tasted these seven pieces, did anybody have a particular favorite? <sighs> Toss between F and G. G tasted the realest. Uh huh. My favorite was G, even though it was a bit more salty. I'm going to go with F, even though G was close. That's two to one for Chef. Irena has the deciding vote. Will it be Chef or Wendy's? I changed my mind. G. 
G Just was your G. favorite, okay. Yeah. It's juicy, it's thin, and it's flavorful. So, we do have a little secret. Uh-oh. So one of our samples was actually prepared by Chef Rod. Yes. yes. Does anyone want to guess which one it was? Probably G. I think we gotta go with G. G. You're all gonna go with G. And we were able to spot the home cooked chicken. Nice job, Chef. And now, the least favorite. C visually looks like fabricated. I wouldn't touch it. Okay. <laughs> she was scared at the yeah. beginning. It's her face. <laughs> okay. And Will, was there one that you just did oh, not see, enjoy? Oh, C, I'd have to agree with it. Just, uh... Rose and Daniel agreed, too. It just tasted real off, and it didn't really even have much flavor at all. Subway takes a big hit on this chicken challenge, and it's not over yet. Which one of these pieces of chicken had the least amount of chicken in it? We expected 100% chicken. The lab results are in. Misleading. You've got a company that's branded itself to help the alternative. This is your marketplace. Which chain do you think uses the least amount of chicken? Send me a tweet at CBC Charlesy. Fast food chicken coming right at you. We're testing popular fast food chicken sandwiches. Looks like chicken. It's not chicken to me. Sort of tastes like chicken, according to our judges. I found it very rubbery. So everyone's wondering how much chicken is really in your chicken. Remember, that's the meat mystery we asked this DNA lab to solve. So to take a small biopsy punch of it. Trent University's lab has been testing and retesting our samples for months. We have results. Yes. They're in. What did you find in our chicken test? Most of the samples came back very close to 100% chicken. Except for two. We have some more news for you. So it turns out that not all of the samples that you've had in front of you are 100% chicken. What kind of filler? Yeah, what else would it be? <laughs> what else would it be? That's a great question. Amazing. Any guesses? Everybody, as to which one of these pieces of chicken had the least amount of chicken in it? I'm going C. C? C? Yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. Are they right? Mm, not quite, but close. Sample D. Our DNA test shows it could be less than 50% chicken. You're, wow. You're kidding. And sample C? Well, our DNA test shows it's only slightly more than 50% chicken. And who makes both C and D? Subway oh, chicken. Snap. Oh, my oh goodness. My wow. Whoa, yikes. Eat the fresh. healthy choice. That's misrepresentation. We expected 100% chicken. Subway's chicken samples have the least amount of chicken DNA and the most amount of fillers compared to the others. You're getting these inexpensive fillers that aren't as nutritious for you. Previously, I would have said, oh, great, Subway's not a, that's a pretty good choice. You know, you don't feel as bad, but not anymore. It's misleading. You've got a company that's branded itself as a healthy alternative. So what does the sandwich giant have to say? For months, we've been asking Subway questions about their chicken. We sent them our DNA results, got no clear answers. We asked for an on-camera interview. They declined. Now, they question our science, but say they're concerned and they're checking with suppliers to make sure their chicken meets their standards. But we still have questions. So we tracked down a food scientist who knows the industry. Hi, Ben. Hello. Thanks for having me. At the University of Guelph, Ben Boyer specializes in processed meat. So these are our samples. You want to take a look? Yeah. He's filling us in on how he thinks fast food chicken strips could be made. This is likely a, a restructured type of uh, product, potentially. Restructured means binding pieces of meat together and then forming it into one piece. 
They stick them together. They kind of use some non-meat ingredients to add value to those products. Okay. And add value, translation, cost less. And what are those non-meat ingredients? We got them straight from the company websites. We put them together in one long list in no particular order. We share it with our fast foodies. They expected just chicken, but our DNA test shows Subway could only be half that. I don't know what most of these things are. It's almost like a chemistry class, not a cooking class. Dietitian Christy Brzezet is not so surprised. Many of the ingredients were refined starches or different names for sugar. Lots of different names for types of sodium and different salt combinations. But Ben says, according to Health Canada, they're all safe and approved. A lot of these, to be honest, you could find in your kitchen as well. Sodium phosphate, I do not have in my kitchen yep. cupboard. What does that do? It's particularly important if you're going to freeze some of these products. It helps the chicken retain water, keeps it juicy. There's very tight regulations with sodium phosphate. Why is that so? So that's just to make sure that it's a wholesome and safe product. OK. Is there a danger with sodium phosphate? Um, no, there's certainly no more, no more danger than any other type of salt. Well, Christie's not so certain. I think these are going to be the trans fats of the future. The research has shown us so far that when you have higher levels of these phosphates in your blood, you're at a higher risk of you know, cardiac disease, kidney issues. They are included in amounts that are approved by Health Canada, that are determined to be safe, but we don't know the long-term impacts of them on our bodies and on our health. We'll go with sodium phosphate next. Sodium phosphates are used in all the recipes except for Wendy's. And we're going to be mixing this together. And you can kind of see we're already starting to kind of form a. Oh, it's like getting a, a, like a jelly. To, yeah. And something that Subway adds that the other samples don't? Soy protein. Why would you need to put more protein in a chicken product? A lot of great binding uh, capabilities, uh, potentially improved uh, texture those type of things. And in some sense, it also makes the product uh, slightly more cost effective. OK, so cheaper. Yes, exactly. OK. Remember, our DNA test shows Subway strips and oven roasted chicken could be only about 50% chicken. And guess what? The rest, mostly soy. So they're, it's very likely that they're probably making more of a product that contains this ground chicken and forming it into a patty. Yep, Ben thinks ground chicken breast meat is formed to look like this. Let's just flip this over. Yeah, flip it over and we'll see these grill marks here. OK, surely the food scientist knows about those grill marks. What do these yeah, things tell you? Yeah, I would say that these, uh, there's probably some sort of oven or grill type of system that they run a lot of these sandwiches through and get a very consistent grill mark design on these. But even he's not sure. So after some digging, we think we've solved the grill mark secret. According to a former employee at a processing plant, these grill marks are actually seared onto the patty after it's already cooked. And they're pretty much just for show. The chicken challenge continues. From a sodium perspective, you might as well eat a big portion of poutine. Wow. <laughs> Nutrition shakedown. This is your marketplace. Get marketplace in your inbox once a week. Sign up for our newsletter at cbc.ca slash marketplace. The ultimate chicken challenge. Our grilled chicken sandwich test isn't over yet. To find out how the nutrition shakes down, we send more samples to a different lab. How does the fast food compare to home cooked chicken? Nutritionist and registered dietitian Christy Brzezet analyzes the results and gives us the lowdown. How many grams of carbohydrate do you think are in our home cooked chicken? Zero. Zero, right? Chicken is a protein. Many of the ingredients were refined starches or different names for sugar. 
that are being added to your chicken. Chicken breast should not have any carbohydrate in it whatsoever, and it's not the type of carbohydrates that we want. Now, you probably do want protein, but fast food chicken, a quarter less than home cooked. And when we looked at the sodium amount, that completely blew my mind. Compared to the home cooked chicken, the fast food chicken had between seven to 10 times the amount wow. of sodium. And get this, Subway's oven roasted has the most sodium, but the least, Subway strips. When you're eating the entire sandwich, two thirds of your daily limit of salt. So from a sodium perspective, you might as well eat a big portion of poutine. Wow. <laughs> the message that those companies are portraying, it sounds like you're taking it straight from a farm and it's just a fresh piece of meat, you know, no manufacturing process to it, and then it shows up on a sandwich. They put this health halo over these chicken sandwiches where they seem virtuous, they seem angelic, and people think they're doing themselves a favor and making a healthier choice. They're not the pure, virtuous chicken that's coming from the farm to your plate. Last question, does anybody feel like chicken tonight? <laughs> I'd like to praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, that will honors to the elders of Great Millstone that's holding it down on the highways and the byways, putting in work on planet Earth. And all salutations to the brothers of GMS, which kick off this lesson for a young adolescent, the holy wisdom is a blessing. All right, the day topic open platform series we talking about is the GMO foods, you know what I'm saying? And some is more defiled than others. Yep. This is Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a short sure destruction. So being in this world, you know, every the it was uh, the diabolical scientists, you know, saying the massive disaster, you being in this world, they got chemtrails, they got um a lot of uh poison in the water, you know what I'm saying, and on the water pipes, you know what I'm saying, when the water pipes bust, you know. Um, all types of um, disasters, you know what I'm saying? Uh, GMO burgers and stuff, you know. It's uh, worse polluted. The uh, food is polluted too. Uh, okay. This is Ezekiel 4 and 13. And the Lord said, Even thou shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, wherein I will drive them. So the bread is defiled, you know. McDonald's, he's, uh, Subway and stuff like that. Different, um, some of these different platforms, you know, they uh, defiled. Yep. Foul food, dangerous, hazardous. So try to eat nutritious, delicious food. Shalom, your health is your wealth, Israel.